Hey everyone. So today I really wanted to talk about the incident that happened with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. So if you don't know, she was at her um, town hall and a pro-Trump woman started speaking. There was a video that went viral and it, it kind of turns out that um, a pro-Trump fringe group actually took credit for this. But we're not going to be here for much long because of the climate crisis. We only have a few months left. I love that you support the Green Deal, but it's not getting, you know, getting rid of fossil fuel is not going to solve the problem fast enough. It, uh, the problem is, ordinary people, right, they can change their lifestyles, okay, they can reduce their energy usage, they can, you know, buy local food, they can plant trees, they can do things which will help, but we're I kind of feel like so many people are presented with this um, overwhelming information that the world is coming to an end. And people, what are they meant to do with that information, you know? Um, it's not awfully useful just to say the world is coming to an end in eight years' time. Don't bother having kids. Don't bother, you know, living your life. You know, you might as well just, what, drop out of society and just, um, what, consume a lot of alcohol or drugs or whatever it is. I mean, this isn't a really good message to be giving people all the time. And... A Swedish professor saying, you know, we can eat de dead people, but that's not fast enough. So I think your next uh, campaign slogan has to be this. We got to start eating babies. We don't have enough time. There's too much CO2. All of you, you're, you, you know, you're a pollutant. Too much CO2. We have to start now, please. You are so great. I'm so happy that you're really supporting the Green Deal, but it's not enough, you know, even if we would bomb Russia, we still have too many people, too much pollution. Thank you. So I think, um, yeah, no. So one of the things that's very important to us is that we need to treat the climate crisis with the urgency that it does present. Um, luckily, we have more than a few months. We do need to hit net zero in several years. Um, but I think we all need... I just wanted to pause it there. So, hitting, like, net zero carbon emissions will be fantastic, and it's going to take a heck of a lot of international work. Um, I mean, apparently, if we reforested um, an area the size of the United States, um, especially around the equator, that could actually really help soak up an awful lot of carbon and, you know, sort of take it out of the air. I mean, there's stuff that we can do, but it's... It's kind of difficult and, you know, it would be fantastic if America actually played a bigger role. And, you know, China's still expanding. So I thought I would look, I, thought I, would look this up. So this is um, carbon emissions by country. So, yeah, almost a third of um, the world's carbon emissions are coming from China. Um, the United States is still producing 14.6. The rest of the world is producing 15.8%. Um, then we've got a lot of countries here like... Um, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, the United Arab Emirates, um, Germany, um, Japan. Where's Canada? Oh, here we go. Canada is 1.6% um, of the world's carbon emissions. For a start, China really needs to try to reduce its coal consumption. China actually lies about its coal consumption. So actually, some of the stuff that Donald Trump is talking about, as in stopping the advantage that China has... Um, they're not actually bad policies, you know? Um, I mean, for a start, China's got a very, very cheap workforce, right? The American, the Americas have um, a very cheap workforce too, because um, a lot of American prisoners, and there's a huge number of prisoners, are actually put into sort of forced labour. Or maybe they're given six cents an hour or something, but it's basically um, forced labour so that um, the American economy can compete with China and other countries. Um, most of the developed countries have very restrictive policies about how much um, cl how much pollutions they can actually emit, whereas obviously China doesn't really. So if a world leader like Trump actually wants to put, for example, tariffs on imports from China or other countries that don't have our same uh, welfare standards and worker rights and things like that, you know, I completely agree because that kind of gives workers um, a bit of an advantage, right? Because, you know, workers in the West cannot compete with Chinese cheap labour or indeed slave labour. Um, we just can't. And nor do we want to, nor should we, right? So this is, in a sense, where Donald Trump is actually kind of right.
need to, to, to understand that there are a lot of solutions that we have um, and that we can pursue and that if we act in a positive way, there is space for hope. So I also wanted to um, cover this. It's maybe slightly older. But I still think it's, um, she makes an interesting point. Actually, there's scientific consensus that the lives of children are going to be very difficult. And it does lead, I think, young people to have a legitimate question. You know, should, is it okay to still have children? And I mean, not just financially, because people are graduating with twenty, thirty, a hundred thousand dollars $100,000 worth of student loan debt. And so they can't even afford to have kids in a house, but also just this basic moral question, like, what do we do? Okay, so there's a few interesting points there that she actually brings up. So, for a start, uh, university debt, okay, it's worse in America than it is in the UK, because um, if, for example, if someone in the UK is unemployed, such as me at the moment, then they don't actually have to pay back their student loan, okay? They only start paying back their student loan when they actually have a job, and it's kind of deducted as an extra tax. But nevertheless, it's even worse in the United States. So, and yeah, AOC is absolutely right here. You know, it's going to be much harder to actually buy a house, to actually have kids, and to get on with your life. So the We Should Eat Babies part of this, it does kind of come from a Swedish professor called Magnus Sodalard. Apologies if I got that wrong. Perhaps this was in jest, I don't know, but he did suggest of help with climate change. Perhaps we're going to be forced to eat people in the future. So interestingly, 8% of the audience in Sweden said that they might be open to eating human flesh. So I wanted to come briefly on to the polarisation of American politics. In 1994, the Republicans and the Democrats had very sort of similar policies in the centre. Back in those days, the um, biggest debates in Congress was over, like, I don't know, half a percentage in spending or, you know, it would be basically really small stuff. But as you can kind of see, now we've got to 2014, and I bet it's got even further apart now than it was then. And also, people have kind of become, like, more extreme, um, you know, just judging by this. So it sort of seems like Democrats will move to Democrat states, Republicans will stay in or move to um, Republican states. And there seems to be a lot of um, social ostracism between the two groups. And it seems to be a growing problem. So, you know, that's kind of worrying in a sense. And this article also says that people who are more involved with politics tend to be even more polarised. So it sort of seems the more you engage um, politics, the more sort of extreme you kind of become on either wing, okay? So, yeah, thanks for listening, guys. Okay, guys, so what do you think about this hoax? Do you think it was effective? Now, I think the interesting thing about this hoax, more than anything, was the fact that it was so believable, you know? Um, I mean, looking at it now, it's kind of fairly obvious when she mentions bombing Russia and, you know, this sort of thing that perhaps this was a troll, but... Or perhaps a sort of political protest to kind of make the left look a bit foolish, really. It's kind of sad that we all kind of leapt on this and we all kind of thought, well, you know, um, that's not out of the ordinary. You know, this is just normal sort of politics. You know, the fact that eating babies is now considered almost normal because, you know, the sort of extremes of politics are so far apart. But it's sad. And imagine if the two poles of sort of American opinion sort of keep getting wider and wider apart. You know, you... I mean, there's talk about civil war and things, but there could seriously be, seriously be some kind of civil war in the future.